need to understand God said to Joe I will cut in pieces those people that try to divide my land Ezekiel talks about when they come back from the sword Isaiah talks about when they come back from the nations you want to hear me you want to get God upset you want to get God angry let me go ahead and lay it out you want a hurricane to hit another city you want a tornado to take another city out you want a drought to come to take our food supply out you want another terrorist attack that's worse than 9-11 you just start telling God God you don't I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the president. I'm a senator. I'm a congressman. I'm over this country. I've got authority fully on you. Your authority has to come from God. And if you don't understand the covenant, you need to go back to the Bible and read it and understand you are messing with Almighty God Himself. That is Perry Stone. Pouring it out just about as hard as he can pour it out. Now, he went on to preach for probably another 45 minutes. And, and here's the whole thing. He began to prophesy about why these things have been happening. The BP oil spill, which I, <laughs> which I talked about last summer. It was a judgment brought up on the nation by God. He began to talk about um, the, hurricane, the tornadoes that ripped through Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And the tornado that tore Joplin, Missouri in half. Now here's a key thing to think about. When these things happen, Tuscaloosa, Alabama is a very good city with a lot of good Christian people and great churches. And so is Joplin, Missouri. I mean, these are very, very uh, strong Christian faith. God-fearing cities, actually. Why did they get hit and not some of the others? Well, part of it is, look at the response. At both Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and in Joplin, Missouri, the Christians, the churches, hundreds of churches, not only there, but around the nation, have pitched in, jumped in, and are rebuilding both those cities by the grace and the power of God. I'm going to tell you something. Thank God. I'd rather have my brothers and sisters helping me in a time of crisis than the United States government then FEMA, are you serious? Do you really want FEMA helping you? Can I preach a little bit here? Perry, is that all right with you? <laughs> I'm serious, folks. We are living in perilous times, the Bible says. Perilous times. Oh, if you saw a towel over top of the windows, because I'm trying to hold back the sunlight that's coming in for a better uh, reflection. Basically, what's happened is the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter... Um, 12 verses 1, 2, and 3. And let me actually let me go over there and get the Bible scripture on that right now. Um, this is totally different for me. I'm not using my regular camera. I hope this is working all right for you. Hang on one second. But I'm going to just, this is impromptu. This wasn't what I was going to do, but I feel the Holy Spirit leading right now, so I'm going to do it right now. This is found in, uh, I can't see my monitor, so I don't know how this is looking on camera, but just work with me. Genesis chapter 12 says this, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. Talking to Abram here, Abraham. So that I will make you a great nation, and I will bless thee. Do you believe the Bible? He said, I will bless thee. <laughs> And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. This is a promise from the word of the Lord. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. Now listen to this, I will make of thee a great nation, I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Let me say this, it doesn't matter to me who the President of the United States is. It doesn't matter to me who is the Speaker of the House, or who's in charge of Congress, or who's in charge of the Senate. It does not matter to me, because I am under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now this nation may endure hardships, financial crisis, 
uh, currency collapsing. Uh, Katrina's, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, mudslides, floods, fires, earthquakes, famines, droughts, locusts, um, dead birds in Arkansas, dead fish in Chesapeake Bay and Redondo Beach, California, dead fish in lakes across America, dead cows falling over dead in, in Stockton, Wisconsin. This nation may endure many, many natural disasters and economic disasters and terrorist attacks, but it does not matter. I mean, those are horrible. We don't want it to happen. But I personally do not stake my claim. I do not stake my relationship with God. I do not stake my blessing on the, on the, the whims of, of ignorance of men. Instead, I base my livelihood, Jehovah Jireh, I base my confidence, my salvation, and whom I trust is the Lord Jesus Christ. God can bless you in the middle of a famine. God can bless you in the midst of a crisis. God can anoint you in the heat of the battle. And so it's not time for the church to whimper down and, and weigh down and lay down. But it's time that we rise up, dust ourselves off spiritually, pull out the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and begin to march forward under the anointing, the unction, and the power of Almighty God. Man, I feel good right now. I see, that's why I shouldn't watch Perry Stone preach too much. I just get too excited. But there's sin in the camp, folks, when America can kill 60 million babies, abort them since 1973, and you can't hardly see a tear shed. Where's the all-night vigils for the unborn? But we'll gather by thousands outside of a prison when a notorious mass murderer is getting ready to be executed. We'll stand outside in the night air holding a candle and singing, mm, can't we all get along? But we don't. where are we at when the teenage children are being murdered and massacred when an eight-year-old boy is abducted in New York by some man and, and is, is murdered and dismembered. Where are we at when Kaylee Anthony's body has duct tape around a little girl's face? She's in a paper in, and she's in a plastic bag laying in a swamp rotting to, and, and maggots eating her little precious body. But when it comes time for judgment, nobody's convicted. Nobody's held accountable. Nobody's going to the electric chair. No, instead they're going to party. They're going to write books. And here's the thing. They're going to give them millions of dollars for movie rights. To, and, and, and they're going to, there is truth. Look, truth is laying in the street. We need somebody to preach the truth. You don't want to hear it. I'm going to have to stop. Well, I don't know how this turned out, but Perry Stone in his prophecy conference,